because that's what they're made to do. 6.15, so let me flip the camera for Instagram. So uh, it's a wonderful Sunday evening. And let me tell you guys, it's cold. So, all right, there we go. We flipped it around for our Instagram peeps. So tonight we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about modifications you can do to a Defender, and I'm going to start out with the least expensive one, and then I'm going to move on up. I'm going to move to the more expensive ones. But before I get started, um, let me tell you who I am real quick, just in case. And my name's Paul Potratz, and I'm the guy behind Heldeberg. I'm the guy that's doing all the social media posting. So uh, just so you know that, but I think you already knew that. Hopefully you knew that, right? So anyway. But I'd like to know how many of you guys are new? How many times, I mean, how many of you just put in new, put it in the comments and tell me if you're new to the live broadcast here, because I'd like to get a feeling for, you know, who's coming new? And while you're doing that, I'm going to find something to drink real quick. So excuse me if I do any burps, my seltzer and my orange juice here, but uh, I'll try not to. So anyway, so how many of you guys are new? <clears throat> That's what I'd like to know. New, all right, good. And so where are you, tell me where you're from too. When you're saying that you're new, go ahead and tell me where you're from. Be interesting to see where everybody's coming from because uh, I don't know what's going on, but my Instagram profile just all of a sudden blew up. Well, I do know what's going on. Let me be honest with you. I know exactly what's going on. And it was, it's all about Enzo. Enzo is creating that uh, crazy growth that it seems like everybody loves the D130. So we've got Dallas, that's cool. So Dallas, boy, you don't know anything about uh, negative six Fahrenheit, trust me. So, but anyway, that's okay. So awesome. All right, so tonight we're gonna talk about modifications that you can make to your Defender. Um, we're gonna talk about ones that are actually going to increase the longevity of your Defender that are gonna make your Defender more efficient. Um, so those are the things that I'm gonna cover. But let me put a disclaimer in there really quick. And somebody from Houston, so we got Dallas, we got Houston, so we got some Texas people. So let me just kind of clarify this, okay? Let me, let, me, let me be the kind of the legal, the attorney mumbo jumbo here and just say, this is for entertainment purposes. If you do this to your defender and you drive like an idiot and you blow it up, don't come looking at me. Don't come sue me. Be a responsible adult and just say, hey, you know what? I, I, I did it. I blew it up. It is what it is. So that's really cool. We got Connecticut. We got Tennessee. We got Washington. So we got people from all over. That's awesome. So that's my disclaimer. And I don't mean that rude. I'm just saying... I am telling you what I've done to my defenders over the past years, um, modifications, and I'm telling you modifications that I do to the bespoke builds that we do, at least some of these things that I do, and I'll go through that and I'll explain all of those elements. So with that, I hope you guys can hear me okay. I didn't even bother to ask if you could hear me okay. I know Instagram, I'm sure you guys can hear me fine. Laguna Beach, that's nice, Mike, there you go. Um, so I think, what do you guys think? I think Mike in Laguna Beach, I think he probably needs, let me see, I'm going to read mines here. Oh, let me think about this for a minute. He needs a D110. That's what he needs. But what color? What color do you think Mike needs to be living in Laguna Beach? Hmm. I think he probably needs candy root beer brown. So that's what I think. That'd be a really awesome color. But anyway, so uh, let's kind of move into the motivation. Mo modif modifications. Let me say that really smoothly. So modification number one, and you know, guys, I did something like this some weeks back talking about modifications, but I had so many messages of people saying, hey, you know, can you talk more about it? Can you get more into the modifications? And uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I, I think I was kind of jumbled a little bit. I kind of jumped around too much. So I'm a little more organized on it this time. And uh, so let's start with number one, the number one modification that you should do to a Land Rover Defender is um, intercooler. So an intercooler, and in fact, I have one. I'm going to show you what it is. 
But the intercooler, think about it as a heat exchanger. Let me say that again. It's a heat exchanger. And what it does is it cools the air that's going into the turbo. So if you have a 300 TDI, or for my Canadian friends that we're doing bespoke defenders for in Canada, you know, it's, which is the TD5, you have a turbo in both motors. And the heat that's coming in, or the air that's coming into the turbo is hotter air. It's coming through the intercooler. So the stock intercooler, while it's aluminum, the top and bottom tank is a heavy cast. And what it does is it holds more heat inside the intercooler. So that's the first problem with an OEM intercooler. And that's what most builders are doing. Most builders are putting an OEM intercooler in there and saying, oh, we're doing a great job. But if you do a aluminum intercooler, like from somebody like Ali Sport or Allard or one of those companies, and if it has more fins, what we call the quad core intercooler, then what it's going to do is it's going to heat exchanger. It's going to cool that, that hot air off quicker, and then it's going to put it into the turbo. And as we all know, it's all about the air and fuel ratio. So if you have more cool, you know, more air, cooler air, which a turbo creates more air, but if you have cooler air mixed with the fuel, it creates the combustion and it's a more efficient combustion. So let me show you an intercooler. I know a lot of you guys have already seen it, but just in case. So here is an aluminum intercooler. So the top is aluminum, the bottom is aluminum. So it allows to keep the air cooler. It has more fins. It's called quad core, so it has four times the fins. These are the fins, okay. Four times the fins over the original manufacturer intercooler. And what it does is, again, is it allows the cool air. So that's your first modification. The beautiful part about this modification, though, is it's going to make the engine run cooler. Therefore, it will increase the longevity of your engine. It will also increase your fuel efficiency because you're not having to bog it down with more fuel, so more fuel efficient. And then it's also going to help your emissions. So meaning less smoke, less diesel smell, it, it just it helps the emissions. So that's the thing, that's what the intercooler is doing. It is your best modification you know, dollar for dollar, it's the best modification you can do. And it's very easy to do. I mean, you could just have some real basic tools. But in fact, you can have basic tools and work on a Defender anyway. In fact, Queen Elizabeth can fix a Defender with basically a hammer, a screwdriver, and an adjustable wrench. But in Britain, we call that a spanner. So intercooler is your first modification. What some people start doing, what they really try to start doing is like, oh my gosh, how about we do a camshaft? So, and that's a modification you can do. You can change the camshaft in the motor. However, it's quite costly. And by changing that camshaft in the motor, what you are doing is you are shorting, shortening the lifespan of the motor. And that's the thing. When I'm doing the bespoke builds, I want to make sure we're increasing the longevity of the motor. We're increasing the fuel efficiency. We're reducing the emissions. So we're and we're making it all more efficient because when they built the defenders, what happened is they, they built it for a very specialized purpose. And I mean, whether it was the military, whether it was for the farmer, because they were built for farmers. So it was a very specific purpose. And they were or well, not a very specific purpose, but it was a purpose to fit those lifestyles. So if it was for a farmer, a farmer is going to be using it on the farm, right? He's not going to really, he or she, he's not going to really need that, that highway and passing and on ramps and off ramps and, you know, long days of behind the wheel. It's basically to put your sheep in the back and haul them to auction. That's what it was for. So and Land Rover really did, didn't do all of these additional modifications. So it's a modification you can do. So crankshaft, uh, camshaft, uh, camshaft, not crankshaft. I would not recommend it. It will reduce the longevity of your motor. So that's the first one is intercooler. Number two, the number two modification you can do is the EGR. And I don't have anything to show you on that. Just do a search for that. So what it really is, is if you look at one of the pictures on Heldeberg on the website of the motor, and you will see generally that top hose, right? That's uh, 
basically the top hose that's going to the side of the motor if you're facing it, it's on the right hand side. Well, if you look around the left, you'll see something that's capped off. You'll see two bolts and a little oval thing where it's been capped off. And a lot of times, well, some of the times it has a little probe stuck in it. So what that is, was originally that was a recirculating, uh, let's call it a doodad. And what it was doing was it was trying to take oil, basically the oil that was coming in and was trying to reburn that oil and make it a little more, uh, I guess you can say EPA friendly, but it did completely the opposite. And what it does is it creates a lot of sludge in the engine and uh, it's a, that's an excellent modification is to do the EGR delete. Just get rid of that. Just throw it away. You don't, don't need it. And what it's going to do, it's going to give you more low-end torque and mid-range torque. And that's what the intercooler does too. So low-end low torque and mid-range torque. Um, so if you guys got any questions, just ask, ask away. So I will tell you, jumping back, here I am, squirrel moment. It's like, whoom, but... Intercooler can increase your power by about 20%. So I know a lot of you guys ask about horsepower. So your brake horsepower will be drastically increased with the intercooler. Get rid of the EGR. And it's also going to increase your low range and your mid range. It's going to give you more horsepower. It's going to allow the engine to run smoother, cleaner. Therefore, it's going to be more efficient. And it's also going to, which is amazing, it's also going to increase your miles per gallon. So all good things. So right now, what we've done so far, we've added an intercooler, which is going to cost you roughly, let's say about $500. Um, you can install it yourself or you can take it somewhere and get it done. So take it somewhere and get it done. You're probably going to pay about 200 bucks. And then the EGR, the kit, the EGR removal kit is going to cost you roughly $129.99. And you can get that from Rovers North. You can get that from uh, Rimmer Brothers. You can get it from Bear Mock. I mean, you can get it anywhere. Just do a search and you'll find it. And it comes with the hose. It comes with the cap off plate. It does everything that you need to do. So there's your two items so far invested. We, if you do the work yourself, you're less than $600, but you will save in the long run. The engine's going to run cooler. You're going to get more fuel mileage. You're going to be able to zip up in traffic quicker. It's going to be more drivable. It's going to be more fun. So that's number two. All right. Number three, air filter. So do you see what we're doing right now, guys? You see what I'm showing you right now? I'm talking about allowing your Land Rover Defender to breathe. That's what we're doing. We're talking about letting it breathe better. And uh, so air filter. K&N, I mean, we all know the name, K&N makes an air filter that is a more efficient air filter that will get more air. In other words, it will get the air through into the air box and it will get it where it needs to go, which is important. So right there, K&N air filter, not much money. They're very inexpensive. Shop around. I mean, you're probably with a K&N air filter, less than 60 bucks. And uh, just check it regular. I mean, just make sure you check it. Make sure it's clean. Um, just do that because air filters are important. So here's the thing. If it air filter, this is my opinion, what I'm getting ready to say. Completely my opinion. But if an air filter is breathing better, then that means that there's less restrictions. If there's less restrictions, then I just have to think that it's not filtering as much. So therefore, that's why I highly recommend check that filter on a regular basis and make sure it's clean because you don't want to get that stuff into your motor. So there you go. So there we go. That was our three options. So that's it. We're done. No, we're not. I am just teasing. You know, I wouldn't end the broadcast that quick. So let's move to number four. And number four, quite honestly, I don't like it. I think it's ugly. I just don't care for it. I really, really don't care for this one. Um, but it doesn't really serve a purpose for me because you would never, ever catch me. Do you guys know what I'm talking about right now? What I'm getting ready to say that this this thing that I don't like, do you, any idea? So I'm going to let you guys go ahead. You're not talking to me tonight. And I want some, I, we're going to have some conversation here. So any idea? Um, so somebody asked K and it's K, the letter K and like 
the and symbol or A-N-D, and then the letter N. So K is in Ken, and then and, and then letter N is in Nancy filter. So there you go. I just did that. Maybe my enunciation. All right. So any questions, guys? Is this helpful so far? I hope I'm helping you. And if you're sitting there and you're saying, Paul, I don't have a defender. Then why do I need to know this? Well, there's some of these things. If you have a diesel motor, um, you can do it to a diesel motor. Uh, you don't have, uh, Mike's asking, you don't have a winch on the front is my guess. So, uh, Ah, oh, who needs a winch? Put enough horsepower in there and you don't need a winch. I've had a lot of people talk about Enzo, the D130 guys. So I jumped into all the reviews here, but let me just kind of do a sideline. Cause you know what? Sunday nights is a night that I get to hang out with you and we get need to, you know, we get to have conversation, I get away from the dogs, all that. So um, anyway, I get a lot of people telling me, oh, on Enzo, the D130, you need a winch. And it's like, oh, I don't want a winch. Um, I just want to make it, you know, I put limited slip differentials in there. I, I did all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'll tell you what, that thing goes like a, goes like what? What can I, give me a word, give me a term. What does it go like? And I mean, it goes. Um, oh, okay. Yes. Mike said uh, uh, modifications that, uh, that I think is ugly. Yeah. I mean, winches look cool if you use them, but I'm not really going to use them. Yesterday, in fact, I'm hopping all around. Sorry. Yesterday, I uh, so we have guests visiting. So Lydia and her husband Josh, and um, horse people. And I said, "Hey, let's go burling." So that's a word, by the way, burling, meaning that we are going to go in the woods. We're going to go on the minimum maintenance trails, snowmobile trails. We're going to go on the little logging trails in the woods, and we're going to see what kind of trouble we can cause. A uh, scalded dog. Yeah, the D-130 goes like a scalded dog. That's so funny I started to say that. Uh, so anyway, so I call Brian, and some of you guys probably know Brian. It's my buddy with the Jeep Rubicon. And I said, what are you doing? And, well, I didn't call him. I texted him. What are you doing? He's like, nothing. I'm like, well, let's go Berlin. And uh, he's like, all right, let's go. So we go, and oof, it was icy. It was snowy. It was, and where we go, too, I mean, the drop-offs are like, you know, in some places 10 feet and other places 40 feet. And uh, boy, I tell you what, Enzo just climbs. So it's a it's just so much fun to go out and do that. And that's normally not me. I mean, who's going to take a $185,000 truck into the woods and take a chance of going off the ditch? So that's normally not what I would do. It's not normally my MO. All right. Well, yeah, it is. Okay. Forget it. I can't fake anybody on that. So all right, so back to the thing. The next modification that I think is ugly, that I don't really care for, that I just think it looks like, I, I don't know, but will make your Defender more efficient by giving it more air, getting more air into the air box, is a snorkel. So by using a snorkel, it generally has a bigger opening. So at the top, depending on what kind of snorkel you use, if you use the snorkel, it's got like the little cap on it. It's not going to be as efficient. But if you have the snorkel that has the opening, that's like, you know, grabbing the air as you're going down the road and shoving it down the pipe and forcing it in because that tube coming down is creating more of a, you know, more force of the air and pumping it into the air box through the can and air filter into the motor and giving you everything you want. So a snorkel can make your Defender more efficient. It can increase your miles per gallon. It can make the vehicle run cooler. It can give it more power. It can give it more horsepower. But boy, are they ugly, in my opinion. Um, so yes. Uh, however, if I was going to go burling, in other words, if I was going to go through the water and I, I mean, if it really served a purpose, if I was in the outback and I was in the Serengeti and and I was doing some extreme off-roading, then I would think it was a beautiful thing to have. However, however, most of them that you see in the pictures when you're on Instagram are not really functional. 
They, they're not, they are all for looks. And you see that a lot on Instagram with the builds is they'll do things that are just for looks. And what I mean by that, the snorkel, why it's just for looks is it's not hooked up. It's bolted to the side of the wing fender. The fender's called a wing. So it's bolted to the side of the wing and it's just pumping air into the wing all around in the engine compartment a little bit. It's not connected. It's not hosed all the way to the air box. And then a lot of times if it is hosed all the way to the air box, it's not properly sealed. So then you get the guy that bought this Defender is like, oh man, I got a snorkel. And he's out with his buddies and he says, uh, watch me go through this water. And he goes through the water and he sucks all the water into his motor. And the next thing you know, the motor's got this, uh, you know, three quart low oil sound where it's clunking and everything else. And it stops. Not the end of the world. Generally, it's uh, it's a fix that you can do, but it's a lot of work. Um, so that's the snorkel. So that's the next part. Snorkel. Uh, not very expensive, but can definitely help the efficiency of your vehicle. If you like the looks of them, hey, by all means, do it. I think it's great. Um, in fact, I am building a truck, or actually two trucks right now, and we are putting snorkels on them. But however, the snorkel will be fully functional and will work, and it fits the build of the truck. And it also, the one truck that we're building, it actually has a TD5, and it is... Uh, it's basically, it's a Spectre build almost to the T minus the rear hydraulic brake. So it's going to have 37 inch Maxxis Trepidor tires. It's going to have bead lockers. It will have the TD5. We are going to do the Helderberg performance package to it. So we will bump that horsepower up to about 190 horsepower. It's going to have the right differentials. It's going to have the right transmission. We are going to do Rose connected uh, uh, shocks. And we're going to have the the canvas straps that will be attached to the the a arm and the frame so the coil springs don't pop up when you take serious articulation which i think articulation on it is around i don't know it's 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 significant so anyway so there's that uh <clears throat> so if you need it good so i won't harp on that anymore so let me move to the next thing the next element and that's your exhaust system so now we've done everything. We have the intercooler. It's cooling the air. It's getting more air in, cooler air. It's pumping it into the turbo. You've got the, you got rid of the EGR, which is getting rid of that sludge. It's letting the motor be more efficient. You don't have the sludge in the motor. Uh, more fuel efficiency, more horsepower, more low-end torque, more mid-range torque, more everything, more horsepower. And then you move into the, the next element, which is the k and air filter. Again, we're getting more air into the engine, so I'm running all through it. You do the snorkel. If you like it, great, wonderful. I'll tell you it's great. Uh, if it fits, it fits, no problem. And then the exhaust. So we got all the air in. Now let's get the air out. Let's get the exhaust out. The stock, stock exhaust on a Land Rover Defender generally is around an inch and a half in diameter that comes off the bottom of the turbo. So it's coming off of that exhaust manifold on the turbo, and then it goes in and generally it goes through a catalytic converter, and then it goes through a silencer, and then it's it's outside the truck, you know, or it's out it's in the in the atmosphere. So that's what's happening there. And so you want to change the exhaust. And we make our own custom exhaust. This is not a sales pitch. I'm just telling you, this is what we do on our bespoke Helderberg builds is a custom built exhaust that I design. It has a three inch down pipe. In other words, coming off the exhaust manifold is twice as large than what the OEM exhaust is. A lot of the builders go with that original exhaust and everything else. But anyway, so it's a three inch down pipe. There is no catalytic converter, none. And then it goes into what we call a silencer. But the silencer, depending on the build that I'm doing, can be cone-shaped. And what I mean by cone-shaped is it's small. It's three inches here, and then it goes to five inches, and then it gets bigger, and it goes to an eight-inch diameter. So just think about it as if we had a, a pyramid, a tripod or whatever. Yeah, like a tripod where it's... Small, smaller up here, three inches off the pipe, five inches to the beginning of the silencer, and then goes down to eight inches. So, 
And what that's doing is it's doing two things. It's speeding up the airflow to get the air out of, out of the system because, again, we're creating that where it goes, blows it harder and gets it out of the truck. But we're also doing with this cone shape is when you go off road, if you were to go over some branches, some trees, some rocks, then you don't have any blunt object that's going to catch that silencer and rip your exhaust off. It's a cone shape. So anyway. Yeah, so that's what I do. All right, so questions. By all means, guys, if you have questions, please ask your question so I can answer it. So anything that I go on to and you're like, I don't understand what you're saying, I can answer that. So Mike asked, do you have to run a catalytic converter here in the States? And the answer is no. And why it's no is because in the US, the vehicles are 25 years old or older. So they are in the grandfather clause that does not mandate that you have to have a catalytic converter. So that's what's going on with that. Um, don't need it. And, uh, you know, the catalytic converters, quite honestly, are a little weird uh, when it comes to a diesel motor because a diesel motor is much different than a regular gasoline motor. So catalytic converter, is that really what it is? But anyway. So there's that. All right. So moving on to the next. But guess what? Whew, it's a little hot in this sweater. I feel like I'm in Iceland. All right. <clears throat> um, it's that time, guys. So with that, I am going to pause you for a minute. I'm going to flip Instagram. You're going to see what's going to happen. And here we go. Hey, it didn't work. It didn't work. That's embarrassing. My little thing is not working. All right, I'm gonna flip you back. So that sucks. I had this little graphic, it's all cool. <clears throat> it worked earlier. Ah, oh, yeah, it's not working. Do that again, do that. It's not working. Oh, well. So guess what? Uh, it's that time. No, it's not time to drink seltzer. It's gear of the week. <clears throat> so I ordered something new and um, I have another version of this, but this is a uh, another version that I ordered and wanted to try it out. I ordered it from a company. Well, let me just show it to you. So tell me, how many people have a pair of trousers like this? Um, and what I mean by it is they are tin pants. Let me see how they describe it. It's uh, it's Filson, of course. I mean, but they're oil tin pants. I believe that's what it is. I look at them as wax canvas. Quite honestly, it, they are much like a sail. I'm talking about on a sailboat. That they are thick. They are heavy. They are waxy. And... Uh, it's a weird feeling when you put them on and they're a little cold, if you know what I mean. It's almost like jumping into a pool of cold water. Yeah, it's just, it's weird. So anyway, I ordered these pants and um, I do have a pair of brush pants that are similar to this, but I wanted to try these. But the, here's the problem. When you are... Uh, Smurf size? And what I mean by that, short, because I'm like 5'10". Not really. I'm like 5'9". Not really. I'm like 5'8". But anyway, when you're that short and the legs are this big, I feel uncomfortable wearing them, to be honest. It's, it's like I feel like I'm this tall because the legs are so big. So anyway, <laughs> Robert thought it was a radiator cover. And uh, no, it's about gear. You, you guys, when, you, when you're doing the Defender, you have to have the right gear. And part of the gear when you're doing a Defender is your outfit, your wardrobe. So, and I am quite honestly, uh, I am a clothes whore. I love clothes. I'm always buying more clothes. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Arch says, well, if you're short, then you should wear fitted pants. Well, I'll tell you right now, I'm not wearing skinny pants. I'm not doing that. Uh, but they are pretty cool. I did wear them, and it's cold outside. It's, uh, I believe it's negative four, and I put some thermals under it. And uh, 
they're great. They're wonderful. Except for, uh, <laughs> except for where it makes me so, uh, you know, feel so short. So, uh, Robert asked, do you remember the tough skin jeans from Sears? Seriously, Robert? Robert, are you for real? Do you think I'm that old that I could remember tough skin jeans from Sears? I mean, are you for real? Yes, absolutely. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you, tell you a sad story. So uh, I was young. I was in third grade. And I grew up, well, I was, not grew up. I, I lived in Chicago. That was my hometown. And uh, my parents decided they were going to get me out of Chicago where the crime was so bad. And they decided we were going to move to Tennessee. We moved to this town called Paris, Tennessee. And let me tell you, it was redneck central, but that's where my mom and dad's uh, little country house was at. So we gave up the city life, went to Paris, Tennessee. And in Chicago, it was completely fine to wear the, uh, you know, Sears, tough skin, whatever they were called, pants. But you go to Tennessee and you're supposed to be wearing Wranglers. The abuse I suffered. I was in a fight every single day. But anyway, all right. So anyway, yeah, we, we all wore them, true. And who wore graminals? Gr graminals or whatever they're called. So yeah, all right, so that's it. Uh, Filson. Filson wax canvas pants, um, pretty cool. Oil finish double tin is what they're called. And uh, I don't know if I'm keeping them. That's why the tag's back on. Yeah, I'm one of those. So anyway, there you go. All right, so let's answer some questions here. We've got some questions rolling in. Um, so Carl asks us, what about roll cages for a 100 TDI? What do you mean, Carl? What are you talking about? What do you mean roll cage for a 100 TDI? Um, I'm trying to process that roll cage. You mean a roll, just a roll cage, like the roll cage, like on Enzo? Um, Clarify that, Carl. Oh, 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 sorry, Carl, 110. The, the comments are way, way, way down. Uh, roll cage for a 110. <laughs> oh boy. I'll tell you what, you're typing too quickly and you never ever want me to do Siri. Like when I grab my phone and I say, blah, 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 and I send you a message. Uh, I did that this morning. I won't even tell you what it said, but it was embarrassing as could be. So roll cages for a 110, roll cages for a 90. Yeah. Um, why not? I mean, they make it look more rugged. Uh, on my trucks, I generally, on my 110, I didn't use it, do one, because I like the cleaner lines, but it's definitely a safety. It will definitely help safety-wise. Um, so yes, if, you know, depending on what you're going to be doing with it, then yes, you can, I would say consider a roll cage. So on Enzo, the D130, um, Enzo, Enzo, tough skins. Mike just talked about tough skins. You're, you're killing me, Mike. You're killing me. So yes, tough skins. But anyway, um, Enzo, the D130, I set that up. I knew I was going to go off road and go play in the trails and everything else. Therefore, I did do a roll cage on it. Uh, Elizabeth, I'm driving it up and down the highway, so I didn't do a roll cage. And I know some people are saying, oh, Paul, you should do a roll cage and it's going to be safer. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be safer. But you know what? We're men. So, and we have defenders and we don't have airbags. So therefore we will die like men without airbags. Yes. That's all there is to it. That's all I got to say. So anyway, roll cages are cool. All right. So there you go. Thank you, Carl. And I was just teasing you. Please don't take offense. All right. So let's move into the next part. Let's move into what else can you do to your Defender to make it more efficient, give it more power, give it more horsepower, make the motor long run longer. And guess what that is? Any, any, you guys have any idea what I'm getting ready to talk about? What else could you do to make that Defender have more horsepower, more brake horsepower, more torque, and all these good things. Any idea? And if you followed me long, you know that I do this to pretty much every last, well, let me rephrase that. I do this to absolutely every last bespoke build we do. 
absolutely. And uh, <coughs> Robert's right, we never wore helmets as kids. And I remember growing up, I never wore a seatbelt either. So anyway, uh, be driving down the road. My mom would be driving, bless her heart. Boy, she's the worst driver that there ever was. She's scared to drive. We'd be driving, and then all of a sudden a car would pull out in front, and she would go, the one-arm treatment. You remember that? Did your mom or dad ever do that? Throw that arm out in front of you whenever they come to a stop. Woof. So, yeah, the one arm. But anyway, no, not a, big tur not a bigger turbo, and no, not a larger radiator. The next part is a cylinder head. So, the cylinder head that's on the 300 TDI is just stock, normal cylinder head. Okay, springs are not very strong. Uh, the water, the water, the waterways that go through it are not very big. So, a performance cylinder head. There's a company that makes a really good one, and it's called Turner. Boy, these guys need to start paying me. I, I get no money for this. But anyway, this is what we do to all of our bespoke defenders: is a Turner performance cylinder head. Cylinder head is the part that sits on top of the motor and actually has more moving parts than the rest of the motor. It's where the injectors are at, it's where the glow plugs are at, it's where the valves are at, it's where the springs are at. So, and that's where water runs through. <laughs> and Robert is correct, growing up, what did your parents do whenever you were in the back fighting? They'd slam the brakes and pop you into the seats. So yes, that's true. Yeah, I do remember that. So yeah, except it was me. It was with the dog, wrestling with the dog. My dad had hit the brakes and throw us into the seat. So anyway, all right. So yeah, cylinder head. Turner Performance makes a nice cylinder head, but now we're getting into more costly stuff. Because to do a cylinder head, to buy the head itself is around roughly a thousand pounds. Plus you need a new gasket. And this is a good upgrade for a 300 TDI because the OEM cylinder head, a little anemic, and the gasket that's under it, they're known to blow head gaskets. So by doing this, it's going to make a big difference in your low-end torque, your mid-range torque. It's gonna to let the engine run more, it's gonna cool the engine down more because you've got bigger waterways, water jets, and it's you are going to feel a noticeable difference. But however, then you have to install the cylinder head. And while it's not difficult, there's videos on YouTube, which you can find anything on YouTube you need to do with a Defender. It's, uh, it's a more tedious process. And you have to make sure you don't drop anything into the motor and all that fun stuff. But you can do it if you want to do it. And uh, that job takes roughly uh, about five hours, six hours, somewhere in there to do a cylinder head. But when you do the cylinder head, that's a great opportunity to change what they call the P gasket. P is in like Paul gasket, which is on the front of the motor and they're known to leak. You could do an upgrade, which is a metal gasket. And when I say leak, they seep. But you can change the P gasket because you already have that off and you're going to seal that motor up even nicer. So this is just some of the stuff we do to the bespoke build. So cylinder head, I highly recommend it. So there you go. So that's all the modifications at that point right there that will increase the longevity of the motor, will increase the fuel efficiency, um, will be non-destructive to the motor. Now I'm going to go to two things that could possibly be destructive. So again, disclaimer, if you do this, you blow up your motor, don't come calling me. I am just telling you what's out there. I'm telling you the opportunities and just that it's there. So there's a company called Forby, F-U-R-B-Y, 4x4, and they make what's called a boost pin. Boost pin is just, a, a it's about this tall. It's a little cylinder type thing. It goes into the top of, it goes into the top of the injection pump and it works with the fuel and you can change that boost pin out. And it's amazing, absolutely amazing what this little $30 part will do for your low end torque, mid range torque, your horsepower, the engine just feels like it's running much smoother. However, I have no idea if it's going to cause problems with the motor. So here's the thing. If you do the boost pin, then you need to absolutely positively 
do an exhaust gas temperature. A, 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 you need to monitor the exhaust temperature that's going on when you do that delete that I talked about, when you do the EGR delete. So you would have to get the gauge that would go on the dash, you would have to get the probe, and you would have to monitor that temperature. So that's the boost pin, $30, $40 part. Great thing. The next point, the next one, is a boost ring. So what the boost ring does, it goes on the injection pump and it actually raises the raises it up the, the actual cap a little higher. It gives it more space. So it, what it's doing is it's allowing the injection pump to work a little more. In other words, provide more fuel for the air fuel ratio. And when you add that, that's a tremendous difference in the power and the drivability of the motor. Again, on the 4B website, and I'm telling you right now, if you do it and you blow up your motor, that's your problem. That's what 4B tells you to. That's what I'm telling you. I have no idea if it will blow up the motor or will not blow up the motor. Um, I've definitely done boost pins and boost rings on some of the builds. I've, uh, you know, we talk about it. I've done it on my own trucks and I've done it for a number of years. So those can be detrimental, I believe. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they are. I don't know. But they do make a difference. So there you go. So any questions right there, guys? Anything I can answer so far before I go on to the next part? So then guess what? Oh, I'll pull that off the screen. So, Instagram guys, it's just you and me now. Uh, everybody on Facebook, they're watching about Rovers in the Woods. So, mark your calendar. It's June 18th through the 20th. We are going to have an event here at the farm in Sharon Springs, New York. You don't have to have a Land Rover Defender. Just come on out and hang out with us. And you can camp out. You can book a hotel. We do skeet shooting. We do off-road driving. We have axe throwing. We have horses. We cook out. We'll probably have a band this year. So it's a tremendous amount of fun. So mark your calendar. Registration will open up soon. I kind of delayed it a little bit just because of everything that's going on with COVID and everything. But hey, just mark your calendar. Uh, and I hope to see you then. So any other, any other thoughts? Because the video is getting ready to end on Facebook. And by the way, if you're watching me on Instagram, I encourage you to watch me on Facebook because the video quality is much better, I'm told. The audio quality is much better, I'm told. So go check it out. All right. So you know what? Here I am just chattering away and I have no idea or I didn't realize but my audio is still playing on Facebook. So everybody got to hear about this. So yeah, come ride some horses, play some polo. But anyway, we're not playing polo. That's a joke. All right, guys. So you got to hear all that. <clears throat> so uh, I have no idea. I'm still working all of the buttons here. I got all these buttons in front of me that I'm trying to hit and run stuff and everything else. All right. So let's move to the next point of things that you can do to your Defender. Uh, and what is that? Facebook guys, can you hear me okay? Just making sure because I don't know if I hit the wrong button. So anyway, I don't think I did. So if you see my lips moving on Facebook and you don't hear me, well, hey, say something. But anyway, next part's a turbo. Uh, a VNT Turbo by Turbo Techniques is a very nice upgrade. That's something that I do like the Defender right here behind me. The Havana Gray Pearl right there. Right. Wait, I got to point it right, right there. Havana Gray Pearl does have a turbo. Nautical Blue has a turbo. Enzo the D130 has a turbo. They all have the VNT turbo and uh, it makes a difference. Um, definitely makes a difference. So yes, that's uh, a component that I do like. However, when you buy the turbo, the directions do. Well, of course, everybody has, has a disclaimer. They say if you install it incorrectly or whatever and you blow up the motor, that's your problem. Here is what I'm getting ready to tell you. This is important. Remember what I'm getting ready to tell you. If you do a boost pin and a boost ring, you cannot, I repeat, you cannot also do a turbo. You will absolutely positively blow the motor up. You, that's what will happen. It's too much 
it's too much boost, it's too much fuel, it's too much of just too much of too much. And there's a point that it's just too much. You'll blow the motor up. So there you go. There's your disclaimer. All right, guys. So now that I talked about that engine performance and getting more speed, getting more horsepower, getting more torque, more fuel efficiency, and making the motor run more efficiently, it's important that I talk about suspension because there's nothing worse than having all of that additional power and not able to keep it between the ditches. I won't finish that. But anyway, it's important that you have a suspension. The number one thing that you can do to your suspension to make it better is anti-sway bars. That's a standard that I do on all of my builds is anti-sway bars in the front and the rear. It's critical. It's important. Otherwise, you got this really sloppy drive. You go around the corner and you're like leaning like this because all this body roll. And then you come out of the corner and then your steering wheel is doing this and you're trying to like, whoa, because yeah, you got all this power. And next thing you know, you almost hit a telephone pole or you do. I don't know. So that's important. Anti-sway bars. And then since you're there, it's critically important that you put some good shocks on there. It amazes me that people try to skimp on the shocks and they try to use shocks of like, oh, I use so-and-so shocks. I'm not going to say any names, but shocks that Land Rover people have been using for the last 60 years. Come on, people. There's some modern technology out there made by the Germans called Bilstein. Stick some Bilstein shocks on there. And while you're at it, put a good set of springs. And while you're at it, put some nice bushings on that thing and replace all the bushings and the tie rod ends. Bilstein makes some awesome shocks. Fox makes some great shocks. Um, Terra Firm makes some good shocks. So it's like good, best, best. So Fox are beautiful shocks. If you're doing off-roading, you can do the dual reservoir. So if you're really doing some off-roading and running across the fields and the pastures like I do, the dual reservoir will keep those shocks cooler because if the shocks get hot, they quit working. Bilstein makes some dual reservoirs. But if you're not doing all these across the field and everything, you don't really need it. But anyway, dual reservoir, that is. You do need the shocks. You do need the springs. You do need the anti-sway bars. So there you go. That's what you need to do for performance wise. And I am going to finish it with one element, one more thing that you can do. Well, it's actually more than one. And that's your transmission. Now you've got this engine that's running very efficiently. It's doing really well. It's saving your miles per gallon. It's fun to drive. It's a, a joy to drive. So now it's important that you go to the transmission and you re-gear the transmission because these transmissions were made to be able to pull stumps. That's what they were done. That's what they were built for. They weren't built for the highway. So you want to get a different transmission through a company like Ashcroft. I do not believe in putting a Chevrolet transmission into a Land Rover, nor do I believe putting the Chevrolet motor into a Land Rover or a Dodge motor or anything else. It's just, it's just not me. So the transmission should be a proper transmission built specifically for the truck, built specifically for the 300 TDI, built specifically for the TD5, and it should have a higher fifth gear. So now you're driving, you still have that stump pulling capability, but when you switch it into fifth gear on the highway or a TD5 in the sixth gear, then you're just like, Nice. It drives nice. But since you did the transmission, you must also do the transfer case. And since you do the transfer case and the transmission, you must also do the front differential and the rear differential. So you do all these things. You have the ultimate Land Rover Defender that is going to be more fuel efficient. It's going to have more low end torque, more mid range torque, more highway speed, more drivability. It's going to be like a normal car almost. And I say almost, and it will never, if, let me be honest, it will never be like a normal car because how many normal cars do you look at and you go, wow, that's a good looking car. You might do that three or four times, but you don't do that every time you walk in the garage. So it will never be normal. It will always be something special. So any questions, guys, anything that I can answer, anything, 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 going, 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 anything, anything, anything. So. Had to close that off screen. That countdown timer is killing me. So, 
All right, guys, what do you got? I want to know who's coming to the Rovers. Uh, where can I buy an EGR Puma 2.4 delete kit? Uh, check out Bear Mock. Look at Bear Mock. Look at Rimmer Brothers. Um, check out those companies. I mean, check out Rovers. Well, uh, no, you don't check out Rovers North. Check out Rimmer Brothers and check out Bear Mock. Those are the two that I would check out. So anyway, any other questions? Make sure I'm getting my questions over here. You're welcome, sir. Much obliged. All right. So I hope I was helpful. So here's the question. Let's just let's just have a little bit of a conversation here, guys. And what would you like me to talk about next week? What would be helpful to you? What would be beneficial to you? So if you can think of anything absolutely at all, just let me know. Send me a message. I would uh, love to share what I know about it and go from there. And uh, don't forget about Ask Me Tuesday. I'll be posting that. But do please mark your calendar. June 18th through the 20th. Let me tell you, I was talking to Gavin. And uh, clutches would be a good thing to talk about. That's what Robert said. Um, so Gavin, he was at the event recently. Uh, oh, interior seat risers. We can definitely talk about that. So Gavin is an English chap that moved here years ago. And um, oh, I forgot my point now. Oh, I remember what it is. All right. So him and Howard, what's going on with the uh, Rovers in the Woods, by the way, we changed the name. It was Rovers and Gents in the Woods. And oh, guys, just stop thinking about it. Rovers and Gents in the Woods. That's right. I had people going, is it okay if I bring my wife? And I'm like, well, yeah, it's not like we're doing anything weird in the woods that, you know, that we're creating a militia or anything. But anyway, yeah, bring your wife. So we changed it to Rovers in the Woods. But anyway, so him and Howard are working on some activities. Um, one of the activities is called a uh, Scottish Trials. So Scottish Trials is something that you can do in your whatever, your Toyota 4Runner, your Jeep, whatever you're driving. But Scottish Trials, and you should check it out on uh, YouTube. You'll see some videos on it. But it's like bamboo cane type poles. And they're lined up on a course going up a hill and making turns coming down a hill and up over stuff and everything else. But it's a non-damaging way to uh, actually test your skills because you have to drive your vehicle between these little cane poles and not hit any. So that's one of the things that he's working on that we will have June 18th through the 20th, Scottish Trials. The next thing he is working on is a recovery exercise. And what that will be is we will have a vehicle that will be turned on its side, turned upside down or something like that in one of the ditches on the property. And you will have to figure out how to recover it without damaging it. I will tell you, the vehicle we're going to turn upside down does not have any fuel, does not have any oil in it, and is not someone's nice vehicle. It is a junker vehicle. But that's what we're going to do. So it will be a recovery exercise for you to understand how to do recovery of a vehicle that rolls rolls on its side. And then there will also be a winch challenge. Winch challenge will teach you how to use a winch that will, will put the truck in a very uh, precarious you know, position. And you have to figure out how to recover the truck with the winch, even though it might be extremely difficult to do so based on where the truck is located. So. That's a few things going on June 18th through the 20th at the Rovers in the Woods. Or if you prefer to call it Rovers and Gents in the Woods, but hey, you're welcome to bring your uh, your wife or, or whatever you want to do. So anyway, so there you go, guys. If you've got any questions, if I can help you with anything, please let me know. And I look forward to doing more videos with you guys. But thank you for spending some of your Sunday night with me. I really enjoy getting the opportunity to talk with you. I just wish you guys would talk a little more. But anyway... But I enjoy hanging out with you. It's a pleasure. And uh, with that, I'm going to go in and see if maybe Christy is fixing dinner for me. Let's hope.
All right, guys. Thank you. Have a wonderful night and be safe.